Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Power Supplies, Readback and Logging. In this short presentation, we'll explain the role of readback and logging in modern benchtop DC power supplies. Many power supply functions depend on readback, and we'll only briefly explain these functions in this presentation. So please see the separate presentation, Understanding Benchtop Power Supplies, if you'd like a more detailed explanation of any of these topics. Let's start by defining what we mean by readback. Modern benchtop DC power supplies normally have a readback function that displays the measured or sensed output of the supply. Most often, both the output voltage and output current are displayed. Note that these measured readback values are not necessarily the same as the user configured values. Some supplies will also use the readback values of voltage and current to calculate and display power. Readback values are updated continuously during operation. The rate at which these values are updated and the accuracy of the readback values are a function of the power supply design. There are five main areas in which readback is used. The first is simple operator information, that is, showing the user the values of voltage, current, and power that are being produced by the supply. Another area is remote sense, which is used to compensate for voltage drop between the power supply output terminals and the load. Protection functions use readback to avoid a situation in which the voltage, current, and or power exceed user-defined or hardware-defined safe limits. Readback is also vital in determining if a power supply is operating in so-called constant voltage or constant current mode. And finally, readback is used for logging the measured supply output values. We'll go into more detail on logging in just a moment, but please see the presentation Understanding Benchtop Power Supplies for a more in-depth explanation of each of the other topics. There are many applications for logging, one very common example being measuring the amount of power consumed by a load over time. This requires simultaneous measurements of voltage and current, so one possible approach is using two meters, one for voltage and one for current. Note that in order to make a current measurement, we have to break the connection to the load, so the meter can be placed in line. Using the logging function of a power supply is often easier and more accurate than using external meters. Log values of voltage and current are time-synchronized, which is especially important for accurate power measurements. And logging is non-invasive, in that it doesn't require the circuit to be broken, for example when measuring current. When configuring logging on a power supply, parameters include the logging interval, or time between stored measurements, and the start-stop conditions, or duration for the logging. For example, logging may be started and stopped manually, or based on some user-defined time or event. Log data is normally stored in plain text files as so-called comma-separated values, or CSV, for ease of processing. Typically, a header line indicates the log values. In this example, we have timestamp, voltage, current, and power in units of volts, amps, and watts, with each column being separated by commas. Each subsequent line then contains the values recorded by the power supply at each measurement time. In addition to the column headings, information such as the date, start and stop times, device information, etc., may also be part of the CSV file header. The standard logging rate in most benchtop power supplies is usually limited to 10 samples per second. Although this is sufficient for many measurement tasks, it might not be fast enough to capture transients or other very short duration events. Therefore, some power supplies have a special high speed or fast logging option. This mode allows the user to specify the sample rate of voltage and current which can be up to 500,000 samples per second. This means that fast logging can be used to capture transitions that occur on the microsecond range. In order to record log values at this speed, fast log data is stored in a binary rather than text format, and a utility can then be used to convert this binary file into standard CSV format. Note that a fast log file doesn't explicitly contain timestamps, but timestamps can be easily derived from the start time and logging interval. 
Log data is often stored on the instrument itself, and or can be saved to removable media such as a USB drive. In some cases, log data can also be streamed to an external device or computer over a LAN interface using standardized Skippy commands. In both cases, there are many programs and tools that can be used to process log data, some of the more popular ones being Microsoft Excel, MATLAB, and programming languages such as C or Python. In addition, the manufacturer of the power supply may also provide tools or utilities that work on log data. Plotting log data is one very common task, and statistical or trend analysis is also very commonly performed on these files as well. Let's end with a brief summary. Most benchtop power supplies have a readback function that measures and displays the supply's output voltage and current. These readback values are used for many tasks, including remote sense, various protection functions, and determining whether the supply is operating in constant voltage or constant current mode. But in this presentation, we focused on logging this readback data. Power supply data logging is often easier and cheaper than using external meters, and it also allows for greater accuracy, particularly when measuring two or more channels simultaneously. Log data is usually stored as plain text, comma-separated value files, but in some cases it can be streamed to another device. There are two general categories of logging. Standard logging is often limited to rates of about 10 samples per second, but some power supplies support a high-speed or fast logging feature with rates up to a half million samples per second. Once data has been logged, there are many ways of processing or analyzing the data including commercial applications, programming languages, and manufacturer-provided tools. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Power Supplies, Readback, and Logging. If you'd like to learn more about power supplies or logging, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.